Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I got another quick little tutorial for you. It's to answer another very common question I get, and it's how do I motorize my uh, my Iron Man helmet? What kind of coding and program am I doing to actually do this? And it's actually uh, a little bit simpler than that. My uh, helmets, the motorization doesn't use any Arduinos or programming or microcontrollers. So there's a lot of tutorials out there that just aren't that you know in depth and really explain what they do the pictures are far away so i wanted to try to just make one that I, I felt was good enough to show to you guys and basically this is called a micro servo um i think this is a this is a 996r high speed metal gear micro servo and it's a little bit bigger but this is something you could use to motorize your helmet faceplate um, if you look in the corner you can see the helmet opening and closing while filming this, I actually don't have any helmets complete right now that have motorization, but you can see from my other videos, it works. So typically what this needs is you plug this into an Arduino or a microcontroller and it sends um, five volt ground and a signal to this little servo gear to actually move the arm back and forth. Now you need to do programming and coding for that and I just felt there had to be a better way and after some research, there actually was. So today I'm going to be showing you how to take a little microcontroller like this, or micro servo, and then getting it to be able to move all by itself with something as simple as a 9 volt battery. See? So using that concept, you can actually make, get use just standard buttons and triggers just to move the servo back and forth and power the helmet however you need. There's a little bit more circuitry that comes in with it without having the, the Arduino or microcontroller, but it works pretty well. And if you install them right, they work just as good with no programming or coding required. So right off the bat, the first couple tools you're going to need to keep this as basic as possible is a soldering iron, which can be had for, you know, $10, a little cheap one that gets really hot, really effective. You're going to need a little bit of solder and typically the soldering iron will come with that some screwdrivers, whatever the size screws are on the back of the, uh, the servo, or that's what you're gonna need to get open, some wire strippers or cutters, and then a battery to test it. Um, I like a nine volt just because it's, it's easier to handle and it works just fine. First thing you wanna do is pop off the back of this little uh, servo panel right here. And what a good idea to do is when you take this off, you wanna make sure you're holding the front together. And what you can do is you can throw a little piece of tape on it just to kind of hold hold this little front cover in place or else the servo will come apart in the wrong direction and you'll expose all the gears inside. See how that this front lifts off just a little bit? So I wanna hold that there. Just throw a little piece of tape on it real quick just to hold it and then what you'll be able to do is pull off the back and then expose the wires inside. At its heart, this a, mic, uh, a micro servo like this is basically three parts. It's a little control board in there that reads all the signal and stuff and transmits the power to the DC motor. This is a DC power motor right here. And what it does is it actually moves up into the gears and then there's a whole cluster of gears underneath this panel. If you take it off, you can see them, but I don't like messing with them, that control the, uh, the gear back and forth. So actually, if you pull just right enough, you should be able to weasel out this DC motor and that's it. So that's all a micro servo is. It's just a little board controlling this, this uh, motor. And now if this comes off, that's totally fine. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to pop that out to get the, get the wires out. So on these bigger uh, servos, they actually kind of did a little bit of the work for us. What we, what we want to do is this control board that these three wires go to, we want to get rid of that. And depending on the servo you have, it might look a little different. This control board might be sitting on top of the motor. You need to get that board off by desoldering it. I'm going to leave these wires to make my job a little bit easier, but if if you don't have access like this, you just need to break this board apart. Literally, that's all we're going to be doing is cutting this board out, and it's actually a little bit caveman. You can just cut the wires out, just like that, and then I'll cut these two wires off the control board. And now, right now, if I was to take my 9-volt battery and touch this motor, you can actually hear it moving. That's all we're doing. We're hot wiring and jumping these wires. Now, you could leave this control board in there, so I'm just gonna push that back in there. Or you could just get creative and really just kind of weasel it out. There's little wires down there you can cut and just you, you gut it. That's all you're doing is trying to gut this board out of there and call it a day. So let's see, there's just a little bit of metal. There you go. So that's the little control board ripped out. And now all I'm left with here is the DC motor. So make sure that's still pushed in nice and good. And then you have your two wires. So since this is a bigger little micro, big little, huh, 
uh, micro servo, what I can do is since it has these wires, what I'll do is I'll cut those wires off. And since they're already soldered to this, uh, to this motor, I can just pull the covering off. So I can just grab it and pull that off. And now I have two perfectly soldered exposed wires ready to solder to. And I'm going to show you guys on the smaller one what this looks like. So this is ready to go. Now we need wires. And luckily you have three perfect wires right here. So I'll leave this little, uh, this rubber sheath on. And then what I'll do is I'll strip back the orange one and I'll leave the red and the brown. And I'm going to get rid of this whole orange wire. I'm just going to cut it off. So then I'm going to move the sheeting back up, pull the orange all the way off like a, what, not fruit by the foot, right? A fruit roll up. And then I'm going to cut this little clip off. And now I have a perfect wire to solder onto my actual micro servo. And with wire strippers, what I'll do is you just shear a little bit of the end off. Now, how you ever want, however, how you want to connect this is totally up to you. Um, I've been doing this for a while. I'm comfortable with my wiring skills and I trust what I'm doing. So all I'm going to do is actually take these and you're just going to twist them on. Now you could get rid of these wires completely and I twist them over and under and wrap them together. You can get butt connectors. There's definitely in a bigger one like this, there's definitely room. You can heat shrink them. You can electrical tape them. You can do whatever you want to this as long as they're nice and connected and you trust them. So I guess you need electrical tape for this. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. You need some way to cover these up. Don't use duct tape. Don't use masking tape. Just do it right. And I'm going to show you honestly why you don't really need to make these too secure. So I'll take just a tiny piece of electrical tape and get that ready. So I'm going to use that. So we're going to solder these up real quick, just a little dot, just to hold them and give them some strength and a better connection. And so all you're going to do is take just a little bit of your solder and you're going to kind of just make sure your, your soldering iron is hot enough and just melt the tip. So this is melting pretty nicely. And what I'll do is I'll take the solder, soldering iron and I'll kind of lift the wire up a little bit. And this is going to instantly start to heat it. Use the weight of the servo and then the wire should heat up enough. And then it almost sucks the solder into the wire. Don't leave it there too soon, because too long, because you'll start to melt the wire. And then do it to the other one. Usually, I, I find the, the bigger part of the soldering iron works really well for this. Um, if you're doing real precise soldering, then you're you know that's that's something else entirely. But this seems to work out pretty well. Boom. It's so the solder got sucked in. Good to go. I'm actually done with my soldering iron. And again, this is honestly optional, and I'll show you why in a second. So now we're nice and soldered, they're good to go. At this point, since nothing's touching, what you could do is strip a little bit off the other side and test this. Before you close it all up, you wanna make sure this all works because you don't wanna have to go back in here. Maybe something went wrong. So there, make sure these wires aren't touching the motor. And then, nope, oh, yep, seems to be working. Good to go. So cover these up with a little bit of tape. All right, now we're all taken care of, covered up. So what I'll do, because I don't want this to now pull off. I don't want the wires to get tugged on and ripped. So what I'll do is I'll actually slide this back a little bit and I'll tie actually a pretty decent sized knot in the wire itself. You don't want to make it too tight because you don't want to uh, actually break the wires, but it can take it can take a little decent sized knot and I'll leave slack inside the, inside the uh, actual servo itself. So you do that, make a knot, and then tuck it in there. And what that's gonna do is when you put this cover back on the back, what that's gonna allow you to do is once that cover's on the back, if you tug on those wires, it's gonna pull, it, the knot's gonna get stuck in the hole and not feed through. This way you're not gonna accidentally rip those wires off of uh, off the motor itself. Um, especially if it's, a, if it's a smaller servo like this, it's, you don't have that much room in there. So the knot trick really works. And now I can pull on this. And honestly, these wires will break before that solder ever comes off. And then you throw it back together. And then that's it. You have a hot wired micro servo that you can do anything you want with. So still read the specs on these. Um, these micro servos like five volts. The only reason I'm using a nine volt is because it's just for quick for testing, but I wouldn't power these off of a nine volt. It's a good way to strip out your gears and burn out the motor. 
So you still want to um, listen to the recommended power settings. Um, a five, five volt is just perfect for these. You can get a five volt USB power supply. That's what I power everything, like my suit and my helmet with. And it works beautifully. Um, these Metal Gear servos are much stronger and much more tolerant. That's why I upgraded to these. So the servo's done. And then test it one more time. That's it. Works like a charm. Now, depending on the strength and size of your battery, your 5 volt, you can run 3 volt. The, the motor will have a little bit more torque. It'll spin a little bit faster or slower because right now you can't control the speed because there's no more Arduino or programming required. So they work pretty well just like this, and it still hits its full stop. And then you can flip it, and it still hits its full stop. So works perfectly. Good to go. With these little plastic ones, however, and it's you can actually see – let's see – you can actually see where my two solder points were in there. There's a lot less room, as you can see. But I did the little knot trick, so they're not going. No matter what I pull on, they're not going to get caught. Um, this, if you're using a nine volt on like a tiny plastic geared one, it's that's going to strip them out very quickly. So I wouldn't even use a nine volt to test these. This is just a really crappy one I had, so I don't really mind it. But I can, if you listen, you can hear the gears actually. Uh, break when I do this and I'm fine with this because I don't I don't want to use this one anymore anyway. You hear them kind of click and slam in the end. And after doing that over and over again you'll start to strip the plastic gears out and then your servo is dead. So definitely don't use nine volt for this. Stick with a five, stick with a three and just play around with it or get your hands on like the metal gear servos which just sounds awesome to say. And then you'll be able to do stuff with your servos and you'll be able to power your helmet without any programming and Arduinos. So so there you go. And it just moves around nice and good. Pushes it around. I'm going to have other tutorials on the circuitry, what I'm doing for triggers and switches. There's limiter switches you can install in circuits for this. Um, very simple to do. What it does is it cuts power to the motor as it's moving. This way you don't hit your full stop max and start stripping things out. And you don't burn the motor out when the helmet is fully open or fully closed. So I hope that helped you guys. If you have any questions, Please you know, send me a message, uh, hit me up on Instagram, wherever, comment. Um, if you think I missed anything or did anything wrong, please, I'll, you know, I'll edit accordingly. But this works for me so far, and uh, a lot of people seem to like it. So thanks for watching, and have a good day.